I'm Vin. I'm sorry. That's Sparky. Okay, so that was Sism. The next one is um, Parabol and then Parabola.
It's one of my favorites. That was a good Bye. one. Okay, pull up the lyrics to the first one. Parable and then yeah. parable. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? So what? Now he's talking about holding his mom. No, I don't think he's talking about holding his mom. What? This body holding me. Oh, I thought he was. I interpret both of these as him talking about his own body. Oh. That his body was holding his spirit. Well, I got that on the soul. second one, but the first one yeah. I didn't. Um, it's true. It could be talking about his, his, his. It could be talking about his mom, though. It's true. Familiar and overwhelmingly he's warm. He's holding his mom. Yeah, embracing this, one, this, this reality This I hold here. now. Um, so wide-eyed and hopeful. Wide-eyed and hopefully wild. Because he, maybe his mom still kept a. I barely remember what came before this precious moment. I don't know. Choosing to be here, right? Now hold on, stay inside. Maybe stay he's talking inside about his your mom. body, yeah. Maybe because he's talking the about next that. one he talks about. Because he was talking about in the previous song. This is one of the benefits of listening to yep. the album straight through. Yep. Because in the previous song he was talking about how um, patient, about waiting and being patient and yep. wait, wait, wait. And here he's saying, hold on, stay inside. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to. Maybe doesn't want his mom to go. Yeah. You know, before he's like, I'm waiting for her to die. And now maybe he's saying, no, actually, you should stay here. I don't yeah. remember anything that happened before. Yeah. This precious moment because, you know, now when you know somebody's going to die, I didn't even think about the angle of his mom, but I think you're right. Um, all this pain is an illusion. And the only thing that caused pain on the record currently, mm -hmm. most directly to him, was his mom. Mm -hmm. Or the, the well, situation that his mom was in. Yeah, the other the thing, like at the beginning, where it says so familiar and overwhelmingly warm, this one, this form I hold now, embracing you, this reality here. Like, I thought of, like, so all his life, he was a child and his mother would hold him. Right. But now he's holding her and it's familiar and overwhelmingly warm, this one, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and he, he called his mother the unconditional one. In I think it was Wings for Marie or Ten Thousand Days, he said uncon he said Judith Marie unconditional one. Yes. Yeah. yeah I remember that actually. And then this one, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but Uncon but he's calling her one. He's calling her one again, an unconditional one. He's talking about her maybe. Yep. This form I hold now, so wide eyed and hopeful, yeah. And he says we, so Yep. Him and his mom. It's interesting because of that that the last two lines, this body holding me, reminding me that I am not alone in this body. Yes. So there's a body that's holding him that makes him realize he's not alone in the body that he's in. Well, I took it as this body holding me, meaning his son, which is him, Maynard, reminding me that I'm not alone in this body. Like, meaning, like, because she's kind of trapped inside of herself uh, and he's holding her uh, and it reminds her that she's not alone in her body, like he's there with her. Makes her feel eternal, like she's not gonna die all the pains and illusions. Also, you're saying that this is from the perspective of his mom. Yeah. I see, well, I was looking at it from the no, perspective no. of Maynard. I, I saw it flipping or the because back and it forth. goes back and forth, because at the beginning I think it was him, because I think he's holding her, and then I think that she's talking back, but that was just what I was getting But it's my... interesting, like when you hold a baby, you know, like, wild-eyed and hopeful, wild-eyed. I just remember like holding the, especially my first, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's a crazy moment and, and, and holding his body because like it, all of his body was in my, you know, he's only, you know, he's only six pounds or whatever and you know, you're not supposed to sleep with kids anymore because, you know, whatever, but I was like, like I didn't want to let him go at all because mm -hmm. like, most people have kids, you know, the whole mm -hmm. story. So like being able to just hold him you know, and it was like, whoa. It was just an insane moment to be able to hold a child, you know, like. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be crazy for a father to hold their child because you didn't just go through, like after having, you know, my daughter, it was like, oh boy, I friggin', I, I didn't even feel like I was alive anymore. It was so long and so painful and so whatever. So like, even when they put her on me, like I, I was like, I felt like I was coming in and out of consciousness. It was so, you know, so like what it's like to be somebody who didn't didn't experience the pain. I'm sure you would experience the stress of it, 
but you don't experience the pain and then feeling the baby like in that moment. Because I know when I held my sister's um, son, my nephew, oh my gosh, oh, he stole my heart. But, but, but I didn't go through any of the pain of it, so I was like fully conscious, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, uh, one of the early Christian um, heresies or, or the, one of the first groups that the Christian church came against were these Gnostics and the, the group, uh, a special kind of Gnosticism called Docetism and the Docetics were saying that, you know, the physical body and the physical world was mm -hmm. kind of like illusory and the body wasn't important and all yep. this. And, and, and you could kind of get there with all the pain as an illusion, but I really like the emphasis on um, this body and how important John Paul II wrote this thing called the theology of the body mm -hmm. and it was it's probably one of the the most um, epic mm -hmm. like pieces of literature period yeah period he's from Poland the same place that Nergal's from so it's just very interesting and just like all the different aspects mm -hmm. of the body and like how important a body actually is to to the human experience mm -hmm. and of course in christianity you you, you, you a lot of you, you die and your soul goes you know goes off somewhere but in christianity you're going back into your body mm -hmm. you know like that's the idea it's like that's the goal is to get back into your body as a matter of fact paul characterizes being out of the body as being naked as being unclothed that's right yeah he does and, and he says <laughs> we don't desire that we don't desire to like float off somewhere we desire to actually be back in a body because we were created as as physical, you know, terrestrial beings. You're not supposed to like mm. float around and be a phantom or, or a ghost somewhere. So yeah. the body is so important. And, and it, it's true, it does remind you that you're not alone in the world. And to to, to, to have proximity to the to another body of another body is 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 a is a spiritual moment. Mm -hmm. And people like make these dichotomies between the soul and the spirit and the body and, and like he could they're all constructed together. So like, if you're in solitary confinement, like think about this, like if you were in solitary confinement and it was completely quiet, like nobody could talk, you would go crazy. But if you were in a, in a room, if you were locked in a cell with another person, but you guys couldn't talk, you wouldn't go as crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the difference? You, there's no volume. Companionship. Why, where's the companion? Well, there's another body there. Right. There's another human body there that reminds you that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. We do that to the kids all the time. Okay, you can't talk. Don't say anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we're recording or you guys keep fighting. So just be quiet, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, but just to have another human body there mm -hmm. because of what the body holds and communicates and transmutes yeah. is, is really important. Yep. <sighs> and I always think to myself, like, this is such a strange uh, uh, tradition that human beings have. And it... it, it one of the things that fascinates me is things that are universal. And so yeah. one of the things that are universal is that when people want to express closeness, they they put their bodies together. Remember know, we were watching I that know. wedding from New Zealand, mm -hmm. you know, and they were doing the haka. Ah, yeah. Ah. yeah. And then when they would hug, what they would do is they, the men would go like this. Mm -hmm. That's how they would, that's how they would, you know, Yeah. and it's like, they, the, those guys got together and they're like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna touch heads and yeah. we're gonna look at each other in the eye. And it's like a, it's nobody had to explain anything. Like you knew what that meant. Yeah. Like you know, like that type yep. of like I love you. Like you know, um, and it was during a wedding and stuff like that. And there was so much that was communicated there. I didn't understand a word that they were saying. Yeah. But there was so much that was being communicated yep. there with their bodies, that that does remind you that you're not alone. You know, mm -hmm. in the world is another body. On your yeah. body. No, you it's know. true. Such an interesting, um, you know, it's so interesting that, mm -hmm. that the body has that type of effect, that, that it can communicate mm -hmm. spiritual things. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I always used to think about that, and even animals will do it. Like, they'll push themselves, like, their faces up against each yeah. other, or their you know, noses or, yeah. you know, I had, I had, used to have two dogs and one of them was a puppy when I got it and the other one was full grown and the puppy would crawl up on the back of the other one and literally kept doing it until he was like falling off him because he got so big. Um, but he would always like to be like by the other one. Um, 
and then one of them, the one that would always sit on the top ended up getting hit by a car, which is really sad. But the, the other, the, the bigger one was like distraught for days, like I weeks even. That. He was yeah. depressed. He was going around like he, he started right repeating pattern, like doing things that the other one would do. Um, the other thing that I always thought about was the whole pain is the, is an illusion thing. Yeah. Like I remember being, I don't know, probably, probably 12, 11, I don't know, somewhere in there. And I remember thinking about like, how real is real? Like, what if everything we believe to be real is not really real? And then I would think about the realities of heaven. And I was like, well, if all this is created, but it's going to pass away, then it's not as real as the eternal heavens that are going to stay. And so I would always like, like, I couldn't like get my head around the fact that like, there was something more real that was coming Right. But all we know is this reality, and so right. we live in this reality, so it feels very real to us. Right. But one day it's all going to be over, and when it's over, like, all the things that I thought was so important are suddenly, like, like if it, if everything melted away and then you just saw everything as, like, like a, a test or, like, a challenge to, like, grow you or change you. And I, and I hear it a lot, like, with, um, you know, we say the terrible twos or different phases that kids go through. Oh, they're at their teen years. You know, like, they, there's these phases that kids go through. And so, like, the child is being, like, changed and tested through almost the same situations that every kid faces. But then as a parent, you're going to go through these experiences as your kid hits those phases. It's also phases for you that you have to you know, like work through, are you going to lose your mind or are you going to get so frustrated? You'll lose your, you know what I mean? Like, are you, or are you going to be able to work with them and understand that each thing that they do is them changing and morphing as a person and you can walk with them through it. But just the whole, like, like is all of this prepping us for something else? Is there, you know what I mean? Like the, I had a teacher that said, and, and I'm, he, he said it much more beautifully this, than this, but he, he essentially said, uh, and it's going to probably sound weird when I say it, but he said like, when you, when we enter like heaven or something and you, if you like stepped off the bus, you know, into heaven, like the blades of grass in heaven would cut like straight through your feet because that reality is so much more sharp and real than this reality. Whoa. But Whoa. I was like, I don't know. Well, and yeah. Maybe he got that from somewhere. I don't know. But yeah. And it's a strange thing where Christianity has, uh, I, I mean, I think if you look at, um, you know, even in the last book of the Bible, Revelation, it's this really fantastical, mm -hmm. mystical book. But at the end of the book, it makes sure to say that that uh, Jerusalem is descending down onto the earth, right? And that it's a very corporeal, physical reality. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah, like to your point, realer than real. But then it's weird because the artists usually help us, mm -hmm. but the medieval artists got very mystical and, and fast, phantasmical and, and, and like, you, you know, we started getting this idea that you become mist and you float around on a cloud and yeah. you're like this kind of like ethereal spirit that just right. kind of think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, and so, yeah, like that type of, of, of this, you know, like the quantum physicists, you know, some of them are saying like, this is all, uh, uh, you know, a hologram, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. This is a hologram. Well, if there's a hologram, there, there's, there's, <laughs> think about this. Like, if the universe is a hologram, that means that there's a table there or a projector a... <laughs> somewhere. What? Right? And that's the yeah, real shit. Yeah. You know, like, if, if that's the case, then that yeah, means that funny. God's got uh, some projector yeah. on a table, and then you're just kind of, and then, like, <laughs> boop, and, like, okay, now here's, like, here's you've never really experienced, like, mm -hmm. ultimate reality. Yeah. And... And so, like, you know, the physical, the physicality of, of being um, a, a person in an actual physical body mm -hmm. and, like, being careful not to over-spiritualize everything because I, I, I think that, you know, like, God meant us to be physical and we always will be, mm -hmm. you know. I think that, like, you know, like, the concepts, there's, okay, so I was always, there's, Whenever I'm starting new concepts, it's hard for me to like start into it because I'm like, okay, how much do I say? How much do I not say? But like, you know, the whole thought of like reincarnation, right? Yeah. So like that was something like you couldn't even barely say the word reincarnation because, you know, you might get some demon on you or something. You know what I mean? Like growing up, like there was all this like, ah, you know, with everything. But then like as I, like I, I think about the concept of reincarnation and that's where you die and then you come back. 
in another form. And there is there is a version of that in Christianity. Like we're gonna die, um, but our bodies are gonna be changed. But we're gonna come back in like that form. You know what I'm saying? Like in the resurrection. Yeah. So it's just interesting that like there's. But the minute somebody says reincarnate, you can't even hear what you know what I'm right, 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 saying. Right, right. Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. But but if we stopped and we just thought a little bit and just said, hey, you know what? That is very. That's very similar to. There, yeah, I mean, I, there there are major differences, obviously, but yes. there's also, I mean, the, the the major one being the continuity of consciousness, mm-hmm. you know, from one to another. Like, so you're gonna know that you were sorry, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Whereas, you know, in reincarnation, like, it's a complete tabula rasa. Like, if you're a clean slate and you don't know who you were, unless there's like you reach some level of enlightenment and all the rest uh-huh. of it, you don't know who you were, but you get flashes. Whereas in resurrection, you know who you were. Right. You know everybody, and you knew the experiences that you had, and all the rest of it. Right. right? Is, is, and you're never going to die again. Right. Whereas in reincarnation, like you're saying, getting in a cycle going, yeah. until you figure it out, and then you hit nirvana, and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I, I hear you. If, if <laughs> imagine like trying to figure out similarities instead right. of like, oh, it's a difference. It's, you know, crazy. And I don't think we should ignore our differences and pretend that they don't exist. You know, and just say, oh, no, we're all the same. I think that it's good if we can, you know, talk about things. And- yeah, you're trying to feel out, figure out, like, where it's, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, then you go to Parabola, and um, and I, I, th- that, this holy reality. I loved that part. Remember that summer when I was, like, I was really big with you on, like, living in the moment and yes. experiencing, remember that? Like, I do. just completely being present. Remember that was a big thing about was just being present in the moment and feeling everything and, and, mm-hmm. and just sucking it all in. Yeah, you'd be like, stop, stop, like, listen to the sounds, feel the wind, yeah. smell the ocean, like. Yeah. Yeah, hear yourself breathing. Yeah, hear yourself breathing. Yeah. Feel the ground beneath yeah. your feet. Yeah. And and realizing that 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 experience is a holy experience. Yes. Like that, you know that moment. Yeah, some is, of those moments felt so holy, very set apart. You know. Well, yeah, yeah, and, and that's the thing about being holy is like it means sacred, but it's also like separate. It's like it's like different. It's like I remember reading this. It was this thin little book, and it was a bunch of these like these little maxims and I didn't half of it was bullshit but there was one that always stuck with me and it was worth reading the entire book and in in the in the the book it basically said there's no day that's exactly like the other even though they're all the same and and I remember I had to stretch for like three weeks when I was just like Thinking about Whoa, that. I, I, I wake up, do this, da, 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 shower, blah, go to work, everything's the same, but nothing is exactly the same. Like, I didn't experience the shower today the exact same mm-hmm. way. It's always a little bit different, and like, mm-hmm. it's those moments where it's like, whoa, that's a holy experience, like, just to be and existing. And, and of course, for us, God's in all of those. Mm-hmm. So it like creates like this this entire you know Lewis talked about this like you see you see snow falling from the ground and you look and you see stars in the sky and you're like ah oh. it's like are you kidding me like you're living in a fantasy world like, I know right you're living in a snow globe you're living in a, you got these lights up in the sky and you just take them for granted yep you don't even have to turn them on they come up on the right time you yeah know? like are you kidding me like you can just look up and there it is and mm-hmm. you just. You just you just take so much shit for granted, yeah. like you know it, it, those moments are crazy, and like thinking about like having a child and like mm. looking at a human being, and the, the thing that gets me about and I have these moments with all the kids is I I look at them and I'm like there was a moment in time when they did not exist at all, and now here they are as if they've always been here, right. And you, you see, everybody walks around like, of course I should be here, and of course you should be here, but like, there was a time you were not here, mm-hmm. and now it's like, yeah, here I am. Like, it's like, whoa, it's mind blowing. It's like, oh my god, like, exist. Mm-hmm. And that—that's the thing is like, at the end of it, like, existence is a crazy thing to actually exist. And mm-hmm. he was talking about it when he talked about being alive, you know, to be alive and breathing. Mm-hmm. And to realize, like how you know, Jordan Peterson says it's terrifying, but uh, you, know, you know, existence itself. Um, and you know, he's getting that from Carl Jung. I was watching a video one time of Carl Jung, and he was talking about I think he was 11, 
and he was walking home from school and he realized that he existed and that's you know it was a crazy it's, moment it's a very for weird feeling yeah. it's a weird moment to know that like i am here yeah do you, you think know? everybody has that experience or do you think that some people it doesn't really occur to them I don't know because every single time, you know, we've talked about this a million times, but every single time, like, I sit and really just dwell on the fact that I actually exist. Yeah, I know. I always have this, like, out of body. Uh, yeah. It's always a weird feeling. And it's a weird feeling. And I always, like, feel myself saying, get back inside. Just talk. Or don't Do go you to look YouTube. At your hands? Yeah, I, I look and I'm like, I am actually here. Yeah. And it is a terrifying thing. I don't know why it's scary, but at the same time, it's like a very. You know, a spiritual moment. Yeah. But I, I don't know why that is, but it's it's like unlocking some sort of crazy key of, of like, well, like, this guy figured this out. Not we're doing this, this, we're completely sober. Let's not get this confused. What do you mean? <laughs> like, you sound like you're on some friggin' DMT trip or something. Like, no, no. There's no nothing outside of just the just it's, your it's, mind it's not thinking. The, yeah, <laughs> I, I remember where I was. I remember I was, I'm pretty sure I was also 11. And I just remember I was sitting down and I was like, I am here. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just like, whoa. I was blown away by the fact that I was actually here. Mm -hmm. And it was a it was a crazy, it was a holy moment. It was scary too. Mm -hmm. I was in my room when it happened. I was about that age. Um, and our son was saying that like a couple yeah. months ago. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a gifted kid. He was like... You know what's weird? I said, what? He said, I'm here. And you're right here in the same here that I am. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. He's talking about existence right now. And he's saying how my existence is colliding with his. And what are the chances of us being in the same existence at the same moment? And how cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you are your father's son. And like, <laughs> yeah. And like he he says, choosing to be here, mm -hmm. you know, because you can you can float off and you can you know go off somewhere, yeah. You know, and and there's all manner of chemicals and and shows and shit that can take you there, right, right. You know, instant. But you have to kind of fight to be in the moment with a person mm -hmm. and be in a moment with yourself. And he, if you're a spiritual person, to be in a moment with God, mm -hmm. and that's like one of the hardest things to do. Is like stopping everything and just choosing making that volitional act of the will to be in the moment with whoever you're going to be with you know mm -hmm. and um it's a crazy it's a, it's an amazing thing like once you figured it out though to be able to do that is mm -hmm. a is a crazy crazy moment so he says embrace this moment communicating within that existence <laughs> oh man yeah that's that's crazy that's when you have that like complete Trichotomy of unity, you know, mm -hmm. the body, soul, and spirit, like mm -hmm. just like boom, like you're one thing. Mm -hmm. And then communicating is from a Christian perspective, like your trichotomy, you know, communicates with the Trinity. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, the outro is interesting though, because he says a body holding him reminds his reminds him of his own mortality. Which I'm assuming, you know, his mom. Yeah. Because she's going to die. And then it says, embrace a moment, remember we are eternal. So it's kind of like, you know. Yes. That contradiction that really isn't one. Right. Right. You know, because what's... what's we're mortal, but we're eternal. Yeah, you're mortal. The the, uh, the hologram is is uh, is going to disappear. Right. At some point. Hmm. And all the pain is an illusion because it's not going to last, mm -hmm. you know. Like, that's crazy. Recognize this is a holy gift. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think, you know, oh. what? I just love that he was saying that because I feel like, you know, a lot of times songs or metal or, or maybe just the feel of the metal and stuff makes you feel kind of like angry or negative feelings but like him coming out and saying like it's a gift you know what i'm saying and like a holy gift a holy gift yeah and like i i felt like he was giving you know honor to life and like i i want people to feel the value of their own lives and i feel like that he he was using his gift to help people 
it, with this song, you know, help himself probably, but it helped other people too. Although other people are gonna hear this song and they're gonna say, yeah, you know, my life's a gift. A holy gift. Yeah, like when you compare it to a lot of the nihilism that, mm -hmm. I could definitely see why people are like, yo, positive. this album is life changing. Mm -hmm. This shit, like, I would, like if I had a struggling Christian person, there, there are a couple Christians out records that I'd be like, okay, eh. but I would give them this. Yeah, for sure. Like between the grudge mm -hmm. and this and yep. schism, I'm yep. like, just sit there, listen to some Tool and read your Bible. Yeah. Seriously, like it's unbelievable. Um, but they they call it, you know, it's interesting, he calls it parable and parabola, which sounds very close to, a parabola is like a mathematical, I sucked at math, but I remember it's like a mathematical something or other, but it sounds very close to parable. And if mm -hmm. you notice, he said, he said something here about a parable here somewhere. Oh, really? Like being in a parable or something like that, um, which obviously goes with my meta-narrative theory of life. There he goes. There it is right there, twirling around with this familiar parable. Yes. Right? Like, it's like he he gets that we're in a parable, and we always talk about the story that we're caught up in, and, and mm -hmm. you know, a parable is a story that has a lesson at the end. Yep. You know, and, and so it's like, our lives are a story, and there's like some sort of ultimate lesson that you get from each life. Mm -hmm. Each life is a story, and... and and like it, it almost like sets you up for to live your life when like this life is over. Like, did you get the lesson from the parable that was your life? Exactly. Okay, good. Now you now here you are and whatever, you know. Exactly. Whatever happens in the afterlife, like, okay. Now you, you, did you learn that lesson? Okay, here we go. Right. So that's just such a crazy line to me. When you recognize your life is like when you look at the, the series of unfortunate events that happen within the course of your life, if you purposefully look at them and you look at each one as a lesson that you're going to build on that's going to help you with the next thing that comes along, like it, le it like legit changes things and it helps you. So, you know, if somebody cuts you off in traffic and you feel really angry about it, but then you just choose to let it go and just be like, you know what, like I don't own the road, I don't know, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, like somebody somebody cut me off, but you know, we don't know, like maybe, maybe you were gonna get in an accident up there and then because they cut you off, it slowed you down now and so now you weren't at that intersection, like you don't know what the heck is going on around you or what God is saving you from or what God is bringing you to or what's happening. But anyway, like, when you start seeing stuff like that as like, okay, like this is a chance for me to like, you know, learn something and be like a positive influence in the world and stuff, then it helps you on the next situation, like, because you can learn from the past stuff. But when you view unfortunate events in your life as just like, I don't know, like the cosmos striking out against you, then you're never learning your lessons. You're always the victim and you're never conquering each situation. Like we have to be conquerors. Well, know? I was having a conversation with a friend of ours you know, and, and we were talking about situations and, and, you know, talking about how to deal with life. And I just, I just said, you know, understanding where you are in a story is important, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and looking at life as a parable in the story is, is such a huge factor for me. So like when you're going through a dark time, somebody asked me in the chat one time, you know, why does bad things happen and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, have you ever read a story that was completely like, you know, Frodo was chilling in the Shire and there was mm -hmm. no conflict and there was no darkness and there was no drama. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a good story. Nobody likes that story. Right. It's not interesting. Story. So it's like, it's like, you know, yeah, when you go through the situation, it's like, fuck. But on the other hand, it's like, okay, this is a chapter mm -hmm. in a story. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the, or, or like when you look at a person and you're like, oh, they're never going to change. You, you want to give up on a person. But if you were to say, this is a chapter in their story. Mm -hmm. Um, it changes so many things, like, to, to understand that and to know that for us, you know, God is writing something and I'm, and I'm, I'm and it's weird because like, I'm an active participant in a story that's being written and, weird. and, and all that. Yeah. Um, but that's the meta narrative, right? Like yeah. you figured out that, wait a second, <laughs> you know, they're, the they're, Truman show. Yeah. 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 There's a, well, there's a Truman show and then there's another show where like the guy actually starts talking to the author. 
I'm oh, like, yeah. Hey, I think I saw that. Yeah, I forgot the name of the the. It's the guy that does Anchorman or whatever. But yeah, yeah I think he I starts saw talking that. to the author, yes. and they start you know like working together. And I'm, I'm like, there it is, right there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Good song. Good song. Parabol, parabola.